Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at Docker with our Rails 7.1 applications. Because Rails 7.1 now ships with a production Docker file, we can also build a quick little development one to just get ourselves up and running. There's probably better ways to do it than what I'm about to show you, uh, but this is just something that I threw together for the sake of uh, just you know getting an application up and running as fast as possible. To do this, we're gonna start by doing a Rails new video. We're just gonna create a quick little uh, Rails project here. We're then going to copy the production uh, Docker file into a development one. And then we're just going to sort of strip out all of the optimizations and change a couple things so that our, our Rails app runs in development. We can then create our own entry point and do a small little script just to make the uh, Docker build and run process a bit less cringe because nobody likes having to remember the Docker build and run commands. <laughs> At least that's my personal opinion. Uh, every time I go to type them, I have to uh, look them up or ask some kind of AI because I've already forgotten what I typed the night prior. But okay, uh, we have our Docker file over here somewhere, right here, Docker file. This is what ships with Rails now. This is pretty neat. Uh, we're just gonna hit Control A and Control V to copy all of this. And then we can come over here and do a new file. And we're just gonna call this dev.docker file. We call it dev.dockerfile instead of dockerfile just so that we have something else to run and we're very clear about what we're running here. We can paste all of this in. We'll just step through this real quick. We start off with our syntax, tells it it's a dockerfile. We have a Ruby version, change this as needed, of course. Uh, in general though, you probably wanna keep this in sync with your main dockerfile. We then have where we're pulling it from our registry, our working directory, all of that's fine. Right here's our first set of changes. We want to keep the bundle without and the Rails in, uh, environment, but we don't need the deployment and the path. So let's just get rid of those. We're gonna change the environment to development. Also gonna update this comment. And then for a bundle without, we'll just leave that as the empty string. We have our install packages. We then have our application gems. For this, we need to do our copy gem file dot lock or whatever, and our bundle install, but we don't need to RM this stuff to make sure our uh, application is nice and small. It's development. We expect it to be a little bit ugly. We then have our pre-compile step. That's fine. We don't need our secret key base because this is development. So we can just straight up get rid of that. We don't need our final image here. We have this install packages needed for uh, deployment, but we're not deploying, right? This is just our local machine. So uh, don't tell anyone, but we're just going to get rid of that too. We then have our built artifacts right here that we want to copy over. Um, you can do that if you want to, really ultimately up to you. I'm not gonna tell anyone if you're not gonna tell anyone. Then we have a couple other things here. We have our uh, run as non-root user for security. That's ultimately up to you if you wanna keep that. I'm, I'm not gonna you know yell at you one way or the other. Uh, I just realized I forgot to get rid of this right here, this from base build, let's get rid of that. We're down to, what is that, like 39 lines, seems fine to me. We have our entry point here, uh, that's fine as well. But if you want to get a little bit fancy here, we have uh, over in bin, we have our docker dash entry point. All this really does is it checks if you're running Rails S. If you are running Rails S, it then runs DB prepare. But maybe in your development environment, you have something different you wanna do. So let's just right click in our bin, docker dash uh, dev dash entry point, I guess. And I'm gonna copy that file name. And we can come over to our docker file real quick. And instead of doing docker dash entry point, we can just put in our entire file name here. And then we'll come into our actual Docker entry point uh, and you can copy this. I'm gonna copy the one from my notes. It's somewhat similar, but really all we do, instead of checking if we're running Rails S, I'm just checking if I'm in development. If I'm in development, I just run DB prepare. Everything else is largely the same. We can then go ahead and close that. So now we're running this custom uh, entry point file. Uh, in my case, there is one other change I have to do. For you, you might be done here, but because I'm using WSL, which is a uh, Linux subsystem inside of Windows, so I don't have to like boot into a Linux operating system, I do need to tell it, hey, can you use 0.0.0.0 as your IP? Because uh, that tells the Docker container to use that, which then allows me to use the local host in my browser so that I can actually develop like a normal person. Okay, so that takes care of our Docker file and our entry point. Let's go ahead and let's try to build the Docker file now. So we're gonna do Docker build dash F and we'll call this, or we're gonna use the dev.docker file, which is the name of our file, right? We can then tag it, I'm gonna call this video. And then we're just going to tell it to build out of the current directory. And assuming I didn't break anything, this will go ahead and build. Now for your first build, this is usually gonna take a minute or two. Uh, after you do your first build, subsequent builds are gonna be pretty fast because a, uh, a lot of these intermediate steps get cached. 
like right here it's pulling all these files off the internet but when you do like subsequent builds it's already pulled those files before in this docker image whatever uh, which means it doesn't have to pull them again. So you're just going to very quickly jump through these steps and you're going to get to like seven of eight almost instantaneously. And then it'll just copy over whatever changes you need to make. And we'll see that in a minute when we go to uh, test our persistence by making like a scaffold. We'll generate the scaffold and it'll just skip through this step pretty much. Uh, but I'm going to edit this out because this takes forever and I'll see you once this is done. Okay, so that's now done. Now we need to run this. To run this, we're just gonna do a docker, I'm gonna do docker run dash p 3000 3000. This is your external port mapping to your internal port. We're running it on port 3000. And then we can do uh, whatever we want to here. In my case, I'm just gonna do something like dash v is gonna be uh, pwd. Then we're gonna go into rails, I think. And then we can do a video. So if you're not familiar, the dash V is going to be your volume command. Uh, but we have this, uh, we we are using the name that we named this this uh, container or this image. Hello, editing Dean here. Forgot to mention this. Uh, the other benefit to mounting your application as a, uh, as a volume, which we're doing here, if I come over to somewhere in this application, when we do that dash V command somewhere, uh, the dash V actually allows us to uh, if I open up all of these tabs again, uh, it allows us to develop our application with the container running just like this. Uh, but because everything in here is the volume itself, which includes our SQLite database, we can also just refresh the page and you'll see that our, uh, our updates are happening without needing to rebuild the code. So although the dev.sh command is nice, uh, this isn't, it's not really here so that you have to stop and start each time. Of course, if you're running like a Rails command, like Rails G scaffold, uh, and you only have one window, you might be doing that, but you can also just open up another, another thing, run those commands and everything should just work with you refreshing the page, uh, without you needing to like, you know, do all those steps again. I just wanted to throw this in cause I know I'm going to get some comment from someone. Uh, I realized I didn't say those words in the video while I was editing it and I didn't want to like just leave it there. So sorry about that. But now back to the video. Uh, and then we can go ahead and we can run this. Now you can see here we're running into an error. This is going to be because of a permissions issue. So we have to change the permissions on that uh, entry point that we created. So in our uh, bin right here, we have that, that Docker dev entry point. If we do something like a LL for our bin directory on F11 again, you can see here, the rest of these are green. This one, or yeah, the rest of these are green. This one's white, which means our permissions a little bit different. We can see over here that they are in fact a little bit different. It doesn't have the uh, X permission here. So let's go ahead and let's do a chmod plus X to say, hey, I want to add the X permission to our entry point. I will say this goes to bin slash docker dash dev dash entry point. Now we can come up here to the Docker run. Go ahead and run this again. You can see preparing database. Now that seems pretty fancy, but it's really just that uh, echo command that we put in our uh, in our entry point, right? So it looks like it's super official, like we've done some heavy scripting here, uh, but it's literally just us doing like a, a puts to the, the console, right? And then we'll go ahead and we'll do a localhost port 3000. And you can see here, this is working just fine. Again, if you aren't using WSL, you probably don't need to bind to 0.0.0.0. And in my case, if I actually try to go there right now, this won't work for me, but it might work for you. But okay, we have this. Let's go ahead and let's stop the server now and let's try to generate a scaffold. We'll do a Rails G scaffold. We'll call it a post. We'll give each post a title and a body of type text. Go ahead and run that. And at this point, I mean, you can do your DB migrate, whatever you want to do. Uh, but what we can do is we can just say, uh, I want to rebuild my application, right? It's going to be this build right here. We're going to build it. You'll see here, it's going to step through a lot of these where it says this step is already cached and then it's done. So that's now your build process. We can then go ahead and do our run and we can run this. It prepares the database, does the migrations for us because it's running DB prepare. And we can come over here to slash posts and we can see we have the option to create a new post. We'll say test and case, create the post. Looks good to me. Now let's test our volume as a final step. Let's stop the server. Let's do another build. And then we can do another run after this is over. Do a Docker run. And I'm just hitting the up arrow key to quickly cycle through these. And let's refresh. And we can see we still have the posts here, even though we stopped our server. If we didn't have a mounted volume, these posts would now be gone. 
but I don't like having to type these commands each time. So let's go ahead and let's do one last step. Let's do a touch for, uh, what did I call this? Uh, I guess we can pretty much call this whatever we want to. Uh, this might be like your uh, your build step or your, your development step. I'm just gonna call it like dev.sh. That'll create a file over here that is called dev.sh right here. And in here, all we wanna do is we want to grab the Docker build command. I'll just go ahead and highlight this and then I'll right click it to copy it. I'll hit control V to paste it. Then I'll do and and afterwards. And then we can go up to our run command. We can do something similar and we can paste it. We can save this. Now, if we try to run this with like dot slash uh, dev dot sh, it'll tell us permission denied. This is on my local machine, so I really don't care. I'll just go ahead and give it all the permissions and I'll do this for dev dot sh and then I'll hit enter. It'll ask me for my password. I'll type in something that you'll never get to know. And now if I do a dot slash dev dot sh, that'll go ahead and run our build step and then it'll go ahead and run our uh, run step. We can then refresh and now we're developing just like we normally would, right? If we need to, I don't know, do a Rails G scaffold article with a title and a body as well, we can do that and then we can go ahead and run our dev.sh. It'll go ahead, it'll do all of this. After it builds it, it'll then run the db prepare command, do our migrations. We can come over here to slash articles, right? And now we have an articles and we have a post model, for example. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's very simple to set up. Once you get it set up, you're pretty much developing like you normally are. Uh, the only benefit here, well, one of the benefits here, is because it's all in our Docker container. If we ever get sick and tired of the dependencies we have, we can just go ahead and blow these away. Uh, and that way you don't run into the issue that I run into every other video, where when I try to run any sort of command, it tells me, hey, you have 80 versions of Ruby installed, you dummy. Uh, this isn't gonna work for you. Because here we know exactly what we have installed. We're pulling those exact versions and putting them in here. So we know there's only gonna be 3.2 for the Ruby version. We know that we don't have any sort of node compatibilities here because we don't have node on the machine unless we specifically tell it to install node. You get the idea. But yeah, this is really nice from uh, from 7.1. Really glad to see this finally because it makes life a lot easier. Uh, and hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next one.